In this episode, we're going to find out exactly why British drivers are so good in the wet. Well, at least some of them. This is genuinely one of the best fights I've ever had in arrive and drive rental cars. So sit back and enjoy the show because not everything is going to go to plan. All right, so you guys join me on the way to Sandown Park in Surrey, going karting. It's pretty much just an arrive and drive race session. These are also road tax rental carts, so they're fairly quick. Mid corner speeds, not nothing crazy. It's kind of like a normal rental car, but on the straights, it moves pretty well. I mean, they advertise a top speed of 70 miles per hour, probably more like 55 is my guess, but it's not bad for a rental car for sure. And on top of that, as you can probably see, it is raining um, and it's only forecasted to get worse, so it should definitely be an interesting race on slicks. So this being one of the closest outdoor tracks to central London and it having one of the fastest rental carts that you can rent, it ends up bringing a pretty high level of drivers. So even when I was there last time, I had people all within a tenth of me. Um, actually, I think one guy was quicker than me. So I think that really says a lot for a rental car facility. So I'm not sure how many of you guys know this, but I actually started my career in rental carts pretty much. I mean, I was doing Forza and some video games before I started uh, the indoor karting properly, but indoor electric is really where I can get. Now this outdoor gas karting is maybe a little bit less familiar for me, but it's something I really enjoy and uh, it definitely keeps me sharp when I'm out of the race car. Karting definitely has a different set of techniques and you can definitely be more aggressive, especially with these cars having bumpers, um, as you may have seen in some of my Instagram posts recently. <laughs> So um, it should be a lot of fun. Slicks in the wet is definitely going to be a little bit of a variable in there that hopefully plays in my favor, having some slicks in the wet experience in race cars. So let's see how well we can do. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so heading out of the pits for our quali session. This is a really short session, so really only have a couple laps here to put in a decent time. So while the goal of the session is to obviously qualify as good as possible, I've never had experience here in the wet. I don't know where the wet lines are exactly, so I need to figure out where the grip is on circuit by experimenting as much as possible. So already making my first overtake of the day, heading into turn one. Lots of rear locking on the brakes here, then a ton of understeer mid corner, and I'm really shocked at how low the grip is. Now we have a bit of wheel spin on power, nothing too crazy. Now I'm gonna go for that really wide entry line into turn two. Seems to be grip there, but it's really difficult to get back on power in the corner so long that I'm not 100% sure about it, but I'm going to keep trying it around the track. So now turn three, going for that same uh, typical, you know, classic wet line approach, very wide in, and then cutting back across the rubber line. Again, I'm going to try the same thing here. Now the fronts pick up grip here in the mid corner more than I was expecting, uh, but it's not the same for turn five. Um, entry, nearly go into the tire barrier. Now I have massive wheel spin on exit. I'm definitely playing with it a little bit here, trying to generate some rear temperature. It's not really that bad, but still, traction is a major issue. Again, trying the wet lines here, it turns six and seven, almost go off in seven in that tire barrier. And now finally in the last corner, um, we actually have a decent bit of grip here. I think I went a little bit too wide. So it seems like the uh, there is grip there on that outside line, but not enough to maybe justify all that extra distance. Now as two carts go off in turn one ahead of me, you can already see that there's a surface change in turn one there. So we have two different types of tarmacs around the track, and that's really gonna be the theme of, of grip levels around this race circuit. And I didn't realize at the time, because my visibility was quite low with the visor, I mean, we weren't really going fast enough for the water to bead off the visor. But you'll notice around the track, like here as well, that there are many different tarmac changes and the two different types of tarmac have completely different grip levels. And yeah, before I knew it, qualifying was over and I had qualified only P3, which uh, was feeling a little bit embarrassing, uh, to say the least. But yeah, I mean, the skill level of the guys around me were very good. And you'll see in this race, it is gonna be quite the fight. Andrew Green. So it was a rolling start. We had to keep a little bit of a gap between us. Already pulling alongside the guy in P2. He breaks a little bit early, it seems. So we've inherited the lead, but he's come for a cutback, has a little bit better of a line. Just trying to get on power as early as possible as a means of defense. Going straight to the inside to cut, cut the corner off. So I've gone basically to dry line now, and surprisingly, the grip wasn't too bad. Here I go for wet line again, but again, he's able to show the nose taking that dry line. So I'm already getting a little bit suspicious that maybe this wet line thing isn't actually working. 
again cutting off to the inside basically taking the dry line and I've managed to survive it but I'm also not pulling a gap so still at this point I've not quite made up my mind as to whether or not the dry line's working. You can see the guy in P3 is going for any kind of switchback he can possibly get. He's really good at managing the momentum and being ultra defensive, but I have a bit too much understeer here, which opens the door for him to take back P2. Now being in the slipstream here, I'm going to have a run. I'm going to take back the inside. It also could be that he was all the way to the left, which has a little bit more standing water, which effectively is like putting the brakes on in the cart. Um, he also might be a little bit down on power, but it's difficult to say as he's fully sideways in the brakes for turn two. Again, I'm thinking of going back to this wet line, but as soon as I do, I see him in my peripherals down the dry line. I, I mean, I don't know why it's not clicking with me yet, because I'm going to decide to do it again into turn four. Look, all the way wide, he sends the car on the brakes under the entry. Now he's got the inside. I've still got the inside for turn five, so I should be able to defend it, but he's done the cutback on me once again. Luckily, I'm a little bit better at managing that wheel spin, especially coming from a, a more of a veed off line. So I've taken back the position. I'm starting to transition to sort of these half wet lines, but he is fully committing to these dry lines and doing just fine. You can see his grip levels pretty comparable to me, if not better. I mean, certainly that short line is helping him get a lot closer to me, but I am still doing a little bit better on the traction there, which is keeping him at bay. And I think he's actually taken notice of how good I am on power because look, he almost goes off as he really tries to put the power down exit of turn one. So I'm putting a little bit of distance between us. So it's head down. Let's just try and go for a few quality laps here. Now, trust me when I say this, this race is far from over. Now, since I have a little bit of a buffer, I'm gonna try these dry lines out. I mean, the balance isn't perfect through the corner, but that shorter line definitely felt faster. Now heading again into turn 5, you'll notice this tarmac change as well on entry and this ended up being the bane of my existence. I just couldn't see it from the angle I was sitting in the cart and that ended up being super detrimental to my overall lap time. So again, with a little bit of this buffer 2P3 behind, I'm trying to go through these dry lines a bit more and it seems to be working. I mean, there's a lot of grip online, which is very counterintuitive. I mean, even here in turn three, now it's like, it's like night and day. I mean, it actually feels like there's improved grip on the dry line compared to the wet line, which still doesn't make complete sense to me, but for some reason it's working. Now heading into turn one, have a listen to this rear locking on the brakes here. I just managed to keep it all under control, but rear locking is becoming a problem as I'm trying to push harder. Again, in turn two, I have a bit more rear locking, but for now, I'm keeping it under control. Now, heading into turn three, there's a couple of yellow flags here. There's a car in the barriers. Now, I'm trying to slow down a little bit just to be respectful of the yellows, but part of the challenge of being in any racing series is knowing how much you can get away with when it comes to yellows. I mean, here, I get a little bit spooked because I see the marshal running, but I couldn't tell if he was on track or not with that weird reflection. So, at the moment, I'm trying to push as hard as I can through the yellows without being um, stupid, let's say, uh, because otherwise I know the guy behind is just going to push through them a little bit harder and he's going to inevitably catch up. And I also have to consider the lap traffic as well, because this is, even though it's only a 20 minute race, it's starting to turn into a bit of an endurance race. So ideally I want to catch these guys at a point which is beneficial for me, but then detrimental to the guy in P3. Now here's a good example of the difference in grip in the surface chain. So now we're on the purple tarmac, understeer straight onto the black tarmac, and the fronts just immediately grip up. That last section is particularly tricky because you're going in and out of the tarmac changes like three or four times. And again, it's really difficult to convey just how low the visibility is for me with a visor that's not really beating the water off properly. So for the most part, I'm determining these surface changes by actually feeling the difference in grip. And that's exactly why, in a real race scenario, we would be doing track walks before we ever turn a single lap in the race car, because we would have noticed surface changes like this. Now, despite not knowing exactly where these surface changes are everywhere, I am starting to get a feeling for where the actual grip is. So now, coming out of turn four, we have the surface change on the purple tarmac, and I've turned in earlier here, just knowing there's no grip on the front there on entry. So I seem to be increasing the pace reasonably well. You can't park that there, mate. 
So from this point on, it's really about managing all that traffic. We've got a lapped car beside me here. I'm trying to squeeze him a little bit towards the grass. I mean, he had enough space, but uh, I wanted to spook him a little bit, so hopefully he would be getting in the way of P3. I'm improving my line in turn five here quite a bit, turning in much earlier, and the power is not such a problem. But we have a yellow, and the lapped cars in front of me have slowed down quite a bit, so this is gonna allow the attacking car behind to catch up quite a bit now. Now it really is starting to feel like an endurance race. I mean, I'm trying to get through this lap traffic as fast as possible because I know that guy in P3 is pushing very hard behind. Now my line's getting much better through sector three here, but as you can notice, P3 is right on my heels now. So it's gonna be a flat out fight to the finish. Now I know he's very strong in the mid corner speed, but I'm much better on traction. So I'm gonna try and maximize that. So now we find ourselves approaching some of the faster lap traffic carts. So these are a little bit more difficult to overtake. Uh, I need to be a bit more aggressive here to ensure I don't lose too much time to the guy behind. So after that beautiful Hacken and Schumacher moment, I now have P3 right on my tails again. Again, it looks like I'm much faster on the straights here, but he seems to be using that lower speed to be much more effective on the brakes. Luckily, my traction skills are still a decent bit better than him, so I'm keeping him at bay, at least for now. And seemingly exactly when I build up enough of a buffer, there's more drama ahead. Two lap cars here, one of which is extremely slow, and uh, yeah, I'm getting quite pissed off with them at this point. I'm definitely starting to feel a little bit of the pressure behind, so I went in a little bit too deep here, ended up taking a somewhat wet line, which uh, brings him back into the fold. Now I'm gonna try and slipstream this cart ahead, but I'm getting a lot of spray in my visor, and I've completely missed my break point. And uh, luckily, there's a ton of grip here on the outside, but this has completely opened up the door for P3. And uh, oh, this is gonna be a fight to get back to second. Now the guy we're fighting with ahead has managed to overtake this lapped cart, but you can see he's actually trying to fight back. So already I know this is going to be a more tricky lapped car to overtake, so I need to be careful here. Yes, that just happened. So just to replay that in slow motion, the car head spins on the brakes, and then I, in reaction, also lock the rear brakes, slam into him in the back. It doesn't affect me too much, uh, but I think he probably got a serious case of the whiplash because, uh, yeah, it doesn't take long before he no longer is an issue. But P3 is absolutely miles away now. We've got three laps remaining, so I need to absolutely put in some quality laps here in order to catch up. Now heading into turn one, I'm now braking on the crowning of the road where it's actually driest, then cranking on the lock to generate some front temperature, and then matting down the power on the hill. And by the way, if you're wondering, P1's completely checked out. Like, the last time we saw him was on the race start, but he is absolutely flying. So the best I can hope for at this point is that second step on the podium. You can see here I actually lean forward a little bit to try and reduce the drag. I'm giving it absolutely everything right now. You can see just how much rear lock I had on the brakes there. There's a massive buffer to P4, so any risk is worth taking at this point. And then seemingly out of nowhere, P2 spins while overtaking some lap traffic, which completely opens up the door. So now I need to genuinely push as hard as I possibly can to keep him at bay. Every overtake on lap traffic is going to have to be extremely decisive in order to keep P2. Oh, and I didn't even notice at the time, but look, he takes out P3 just behind me. I mean, it's so unfortunate, but I mean, all I can do is push as hard as possible. Coming around the last corner, last lap here, 
and we come home to take second position. That was an amazing battle with the guy in third, so really massive props to him. That was such an amazing battle. Yeah, you see three all right so i am now sitting in my car i am soaking wet really bad idea not having a wetsuit but uh i never really did carding so i never had a wetsuit props to the other guys for keeping it clean and having uh, some serious pace as well hope this gives you some insight into why i think british drivers have inherently great speed in the wet uh, part of that is you have days like this almost every weekend so i think even if you were in a place in the states where it did rain a lot most cart tracks aren't gonna let you drive with slicks in the wet like this and they certainly won't be road tax rental cards at that. So this is really just an amazing training tool. And uh, yeah, I really wish I had access to this when I was younger. And if you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy some of my real life racing commentaries, like this one on the streets of Po in South of France, where I actually was on slicks in the wet. So uh, it's pretty fitting for this one. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys in the next one.